Hello everyone, in the previous video of my binomial expansion, I explained how to expand when the power is a positive integer. So the question was x plus y to the power 5. So 5 was a positive integer. That's why I used the pattern thing, right? But in this video, I will explain uh, how to expand when you do not have a positive integer. So the po if the po power is negative, if the power is fraction, if the power is any unknown term, for example, p, k, anything. So uh, when you do not have a positive integer, you cannot go with the pattern thing. You need to use this formula. So if I just look at the uh, situation here, the uh, equation here is 1 plus x to the power n. n is the power. The first term is 1 and the second term is x. In that case, the formula should be 1 plus nx n n minus 1 2 factorial x square n n minus 1 n minus 2 3 factorial x cube so if you need to uh, to to uh, to remember it is a in an easier way you can actually count the parts for example we have 1 2 then 2 factorial power is 2 the next one you have three parts 1 2 3 3 factorial power is 3 if you need the next one it should be n n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 so 1 2 3 4 divided by 4 factorial the power is 4 so that's how I try to remember the formula okay so the condition is that the first term should always be 1 if not in that case you need to make the first term one we will see that as an example problem i will solve three example problem in this video and the, uh, the equation is valid only when the range of values of x is within this uh, minus one to one okay so let me solve three example problems and i will also explain uh, how to calculate the range at the end of the video so let's get started So uh, the question says 1 plus x to the power half. We need to expand this in ascending powers as far as x to the power cube. Uh, okay, so this is the formula and 1 plus x to the power half. So n is half. So if I just replace this in this formula, 1 plus half x, n is half. So half, half minus 1 divided by 2 factorial x square half half minus 1 half minus 2 divided by 3 factorial x cube so this is 1 plus half x and uh, half minus 1 is minus half to get 2 factorial you need to use the calculator so to get the factorial sign uh, you need to press shift x to the power minus 1 x to the power minus 1 is just beside the log button or just below the mode button so when you press shift x to the power minus 1 you will get the exclamation exclamatory sign so the value of 2 factorial is actually 2 next half uh, half minus 1 is minus half half minus 2 is minus 3 by 2 3 factorial from the calculator we will get 6 then x cube so the final line is uh, the value is 1 but pause uh, negative 1 by 8 so from the calculator I will get the value minus 8 1 by 8 x square and the next one is minus minus will be plus half into half into 3 by 2 and then divided by 6 this will give us 1 by 16 x cube plus dot dot so uh, as in we have extra terms here but we don't need that since the question wanted us to find up to x cube if it says up to x square we would have stopped here so that's it that's example number one Next example number two. 
as you can see we have 9 plus x but at the very beginning of the video i said that the first term should be 1 so i need to simplify this a little bit before starting so i need to factorize this so 1 plus x by 9 and this entire thing whole to the power half so and then this half will be given to both the terms so we will have 9 to the power half 1 plus x by 9 to the power half so that gives us 9 to the power half is 3 and 1 plus x by 9 to the power half so the thing is we have 3 here and then you uh, expand this normally just like example 1 because now the first term is actually 1 so this will be the formula is what 1 plus n x 1 plus n is half and x is the second term right x by 9 plus half half minus 1 divided by 2 factorial x by 9 whole square plus dot dot since it says up to x square then 1 plus 9 to 18 18x and then uh, half this one is minus half this is uh, wait minus half by 2 and this is x square by 9 square is 81 so 3 1 plus 1 by 18x minus 1 by 648 as in 2 into 2 into 2 into 81 from the calculator will get this value plus dot dot and then at the very last line you need to multiply this 3 with each and every single term so the final line should be 3 um plus 3 into 1 by 18 that will give us 1 by 6x six, minus 216x squared so that's the last line so this is example number 2 next is example number 3 so here as we can see we need to expand 1 minus 3x to the power half um, so in this case we have a minus at the uh, middle right so this is the formula for 1 plus x whenever you have 1 minus something what i do is i select 1 as the first term x as the second term and then for the negative i just select alternate sign so the first one is positive the second one is negative then positive negative as in whenever you have a negative at the middle uh, use positive negative alternatively and uh, just like we had done in the uh, last video for negative sign negative sign as in not the power negative at the middle you can actually solve using this entire thing as second term but i prefer using this so 1 minus 3x to the power half we need to expand this up to x square so the first term is 1 then the second one is negative n x n is half x is just the three x i'm not selecting minus because for minus i'm taking alternate signs if you select minus three x as entirely as the second term in that case it will be plus 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 but i prefer using the second one so only three x so positive negative the next one is positive n n minus 1 so half half minus 1 2 factorial second term is 3x whole square so positive negative positive negative positive you need to continue like this i'm stopping here because it has to be up to x square so 2 by sorry 3 by 2 3 by 2 x then we have half minus half 2 factorial is 2 9 3 square is 9 so the last line is 1 minus 3 by 2x minus 9 by 8 x square
like I said, you could have actually used the entire thing as the second term. In that case, it will be plus, 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 and all the x would have been minus 3x, minus 3x whole square. You can also do that way. Next, uh, if we need to find the range of values of x for which the expansion is valid. Uh, like I said, x has to be within minus 1 to 1, right? The range is from minus 1 to 1. So if you have 2x as the second term, in that case, uh, 2x is minus 1, 2 plus 1. And then you need to subject x. So it should be minus half and plus half, as in you divide 2 on both sides. Even if it's at the denominator level, it's 3x. So 3x is within this range and then to get the range of x you just need to divide this by 3 as in subject x so that's minus 1 by 3 2 plus 1 by 3 so if we look at our example problems for example 3 the range is what minus 1 by 3 2 plus 1 by 3 if we look at example number 2 you cannot uh, select x from here you need to select from the simplest form where the first term is 1 right so x by 9 is from minus 1 to 1 and then as in you select the second term x by 9 from minus 1 to 1 and then you subject x so that will give us minus 9 to plus 9 as in I'm multiplying 9 on both sides as in as in just like cross multiplying you just subject x that's it and you can even use a shortcut like 9, 9 plus x equals to 0. So that will give us the value of x minus 9. And then you just select the same value 9 from minus 1 to plus. Because it's actually the modulus part. The absolute value, it has to be less than 9. So when you replace the modulus sign, we have positive 9 and negative 9 on both sides. this one is just x so the range is from minus 1 to 1 so like i said the range has to be from minus 1 to 1 so if you have uh, something different as in 2x 3x and then you subject x that's it that's how you find the range of values of x for which your expansion is valid and if the first term is not 1 you just factorize and make it 1 and then start solving well, uh, this formula is applicable for every problems related to binomial, as in even, uh, even for positive integer, you can use this formula. But the thing is, pattern is easier compared to this formula. So since a pattern is applicable for positive integer, so whenever we have a positive integer, we go with the pattern instead of this formula. And when we cannot use the pattern uh, like this, uh, for this situation, that's when we use this formula. But then again, if you uh, do not like pattern, you can also use this formula. This formula can also be used for positive and negative. For every power of n, this formula can be used. But like I said, this formula is a bit complicated compared to the pattern thing. So for positive integer, we prefer using the pattern instead of this formula. And when it's, an, it's not, when the power is not a positive integer, that's when we actually, we are forced to use this formula. Because we cannot go with the pattern here. Okay, so that's it. That's uh, the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.